So from the quantitative chemical analysis book written by Harris, we find this paragraph. It says, sometimes composition is expressed as parts per million or parts per billion, which means grams of substance per million or billion grams of total solution or mixture. Because the density of a dilute aqueous solution is close to one gram per million per milliliter, we frequently equate one gram of water with one milliliter of water, although this equivalence is only approximate. Therefore, one part per million corresponds to one microgram per milliliter. So what the hell does that mean? Well, first, um, in the book, they give us these equations, and we notice that it's going to be mass of substance divided by mass of sample times 10 to the 6 if we want to get part per million. Well, here we have mass of sample, and in the definition, they tell us that it's total solution or mixture. I don't know why they chose different words, but they will be the same. So in this case, the sample is going to contain the mass of the substance that we care about. So the sample is going to contain the mass of the substance plus the everything else that we don't care about. And that's going to be the same in the case for the solution or the mixture. So I didn't feel pretty comfortable working with parts per million or parts per billion, but I, lo but I do know another one, which is parts per hundred. And that is just the same thing as percentage. So if we want to get uh, the parts per hundred or percentage of mass X in a sample, we just do the mass of X divided by the mass of the sample times 100 percent or parts per hundred. We're totally allowed to just say parts per hundred. So for example, if we have five grams of X in a sample that weighs 10 grams, and remember we can either say sample or solution or mixture, we just do five grams of x divided by 10 grams of the sample times 100 percent or parts per hundred which is equal to 50 percent or just 50 parts per hundred so now what if we want it in parts per million so the only difference between this equation and these equations right here is that if we want to get it in parts per million we multiply times 10 to the 6 and here we multiply if we want to get it in parts per hundred we multiply times 10 to the 2 which is 100. So the difference is also that here we have a denoted symbol, and for these guys, we don't. Actually, I'm not sure if there is a symbol for these guys. I have to, I have to look that up, but, but we know the symbol for parts per 100. So we wanted it parts per million. We just do the 5 uh, grams of X divided by 10 grams of sample times 10 to the 6 parts per million. And that is just going to give us equal to 5 times 10 to the 5 parts per million. Okay, so now let's go to the big question. How is microgram per milliliter equal to one part per million? So in order to answer that question, we have to first make, we have to first answer another question. Is 0.5 equal to 5%? Well, no, that's not equal to that. 0.5 times 10%, times 100% is equal to 50%. So how does the quote from Harris work? Well, the thing is that they inserted a really sneaky word that they say one part per million corresponds to one microgram per milliliter. So they didn't say equal, it corresponds. So we say here that 0.5 is not equal to this guy, but 0.5 actually corresponds to 50%. How do you get the equal? It's by doing 0.5 times 100%. It's equal to 50%. Okay? So we go back here. And let me erase these guys because they're spoiling our thing. So we start with one microgram per milliliter. Well, per milliliter of what? Well, in this case, it's going to be the solution. Okay. Now we change the micro, the micro right here, we change it to the value that micro is. So we know that one micro is equal to 10 to the negative six. So we just insert this guy right here. So we have this guy. And then we're gonna um, convert the milliliter to grams. And how do we do that? Well, we just multiply by its density. So if we go back to the quote from Harris, it says that we have to assume that the solution is very dilute. So what does that mean? It means that the density of the solution is going to be pretty much the same as the density of water. So here, 
this is the milliliters of solution. So we just need to multiply this guy times the density of water, which is just one gram per milliliter. So we're going to cancel our units right here. And we're going to end up with one times 10 to the negative six grams per grams of solution, right? Here our solution, we're pretending that the density of the solution is going to be equal to the density of water. Now, is this equal to one part per million? Well, the answer is no. It corresponds to one part per million. So what do we have to do? Well, we have to multiply it times like, um, here we have our equation right here. We just have to multiply it times 10 to the 6. So we're going to grab this guy and we're going to multiply it times 10 to the 6 parts per million. And that's going to give us our parts per million. We can just cancel the units right here. Minus 6 plus 6 is equal to 0. So you're going to have times 10 to the 0, which is just 1. And that is just equal to this.